Hello and welcome. This video demonstrates the administrative experience of Apache ActiveMQ. This video is actually part of some reliability and failover testing that we completed, but felt that there was value in putting together a video introduction of the ActiveMQ administrative and management environment. Now, to provide a very brief overview, this is the architecture that was used for the reliability and failover testing that we did. The important point to note here is that there are four master brokers, each with a corresponding slave. This is simply to provide some clarity for the rest of the video where we'll be working with the different brokers. Now we've gone ahead and installed ActiveMQ on all the servers, which simply required creating a user and a group and extracting the downloaded tar files. From the configuration perspective, ActiveMQ brokers are configured using a broker XML file. Now a standard template is provided and we needed to make just a few updates. For example, the broker name, the directory, the network connectors, and the location of the persistent store, which in our case we're using NFS version 4. This also leads me to an important point in that if you need to make any changes to the running brokers, it will require the restarting of the broker with the new configuration file. Because we are using more than one master broker in a network of brokers, we need to make sure that we configure their connectivity. For ease of use, in our case, we're simply using the default multicast, which allows dynamically adding and removing brokers to the network of brokers. But if you're deploying in a public cloud environment that doesn't always allow multicast, uh, you would have to specify these connections statically, meaning that all the configuration files would need to be updated and the running brokers restarted to add or remove servers in the future. And finally, in our case, we are using master slave failover, which means that the slave needs the same broker name, directory, and persistent store as the master broker. Let's go ahead and start up the first broker, which is done at the command line with the appropriate XML configuration file. And that is about the extent that we can do with the command line. So once it's up, let's go ahead and open up the web-based administrative console. And as you can see, it's actually a pretty rudimentary interface. You've got your bare necessities here for interaction with the queues and topics. So I'm going to start up at broker number two again at the command line and I happen to have the commands in the history here so it makes typing a little bit quicker for me for purposes of the video and once that's started up we go back to the administrative interface and we can actually see that broker number two is now connected in the network of brokers so again we'll start up the broker number three And while we're at it, let's start up broker number four. Okay, once those are all started up, we can check our network of brokers. And there, now we can see that all four servers are connected to one another. But this is only for the broker number one. So let's open up broker number two's web console. And we can see that we can connect to one, three, and four. We'll open up number three. And in here, we can see that we're kind of talking to brokers one, two, and four. And finally, broker number four. we can see brokers number one, two, and three. So now we know they're all speaking to one another. Let's go ahead and start up the slave brokers for each of the master brokers. 
And while we're starting up the Slave Brokers, I did want to mention that the web-based administrative console is not available for Slave Brokers, only Master Brokers, which means you will not be able to see the status of a Slave Broker other than through uh, whether or not the process is running. And let's go ahead and start up Slave number four. Now what constitutes a slave here is that it will try and obtain a lock on the persistent store, which in our case is NSF4, and as you can see here, it hasn't been able to obtain that lock, so it starts up in slave waiting for the master to fail. So now that our environment is up and running, uh, just to show you some of the things that we can do through the administrative interface here, like create a queue. And once that queue is created, we can actually go and send a test message. A simple message is fine. We can uh, view the queue and see the message that we just sent is there. We can go ahead and create a topic for publish and subscribe. And similarly, we can actually send a message to the topic. And there we go. And we can create subscribers for that topic. In closing, we wanted to leave you with a high-level summary of the types of administrative and monitoring functions that can be performed through the various interfaces. As we've already mentioned, Apache ActiveMQ provides somewhat of a mix and match in terms of where certain tasks can be performed. The community does provide some shell scripts in an attempt to add to the command line capabilities, but some of these are limited either by platform or returning information that's specific to predefined queries in the scripts. As you can see, one of the drawbacks is that there is no central way of controlling the active MQ environment. And because the management is split between the command line for starting and stopping the brokers and the web-based console, it really does limit the amount of administration that can be automated or completed through a scripting language. So that concludes our demonstration of the active MQ administrative experience. We hope that this video provided you with some valuable insight and as always, we want to thank you for watching.